Okay, uh, let's begin uh, the afternoon session. I hope that you have enjoyed the meeting so far. I, I really do. Um, our first speaker is Professor Yerlan Ay Muratov from Besenkov Institute, Kazakhstan. And he will talk about universality of peaking time of supernovae in association with TRBs. Uh, uh, you have uh, 25 minutes to go, and hopefully we will have five minutes for uh, questions and answers. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you, the local organizers of Isfahan and Ikranet, especially Saroosh, for managing all that stuff with continuous messaging with people. Today, I'll present a talk uh, based on the very pre preliminary uh, results of our activity with Ikranet, with Rem Ruffini. And today, we'll talk about the universality of peaking time of supernovae associated with the gamma ray burst. Okay? Just a short reminder, because uh, yesterday you had a very brilliant uh, reviews and science talks by, by, uh, by uh, Italian scientists. I will just review, give a short review on the gamma ray burst situation and focus especially on the association with the supernovae, as actually was done by, by Massimo Davanale as well. So, gamma ray burst is uh, observed in the, the whole electromagnetic range and as well in gravitational wave range. So, it's a multi messenger. And uh, here you can see that uh, the gamma ray part, which actually uh, the triggering part, starts and continues with the X-ray, ultraviolet, visible infrared, microwave, and radio. Uh, this is not the case in every uh, event we have observed, but it seems that it has the possibility to be detected, and if the, we have a possibility to detect it at, at the Earth. So I will give a short background and describe a little bit of methods we used, and then we just stop briefly on the results and discussion, okay? so. The first observational fact, it's a crash course on GRB if you don't know this stuff. Uh, GRB is an isotropic distribution of the sky. That means that the extra galactic origin, that means that they have a very high redshift. So here you can see the picture built on the height of uh, plane, uh, which shows the GRB actually of uh, uh, isotropic on the sky. And if they were like in the galactic origin, they were there will be an equator, equatorial plane, as we can see, it as, as in the Milky Way. And since they are distributed uh, isotropically, we can see here that the black and red dots are GRBs of the long and short nature we'll discuss on the next slides. Okay? So that means that they have a very high redshift. And indeed, their redshift varies up to the age of ionization, like uh, the shift 9.2, this is the record of we have uh, for the GRB observed. And on the, on, on the top, you can see that the, the age of the universe uh, correspond to the point, point 0.4 of the, of, the, of the duration. So, and uh, the second observational fact we should state is a temporal B modality. So we observed the GRBs and the gamma rays and it seems that they have come in two flavors, a long and the short duration. So you can see here the, the, the duration of the burst in the gamma rays. So some of the bursts are very brief, starting from milliseconds to several seconds and lasting up to two minutes and you know, uh, tens of minutes. This is long journeys. And it seems that we, collect, we were collecting statistics and by 1993, it was obvious that they have a B-model distribution, so they separate into two groups, which could mean that they could have a different origin and different progenitors, which then uh, became as usual and as standard. So nowadays, we know and we state that uh, long GRBs with the prolonged gamma ray activity, they probably uh, of the origin of, of uh, death of some massive star involved maybe in binary system and so on. While the short gamma ray bursts, the very brief flashes lasting less than two seconds are origin of uh, merging binary neutron stars, it is believed so. And especially that one of the short GRBs is uh, associated with the gravitational wave emission, the, on, uh, the only one we have so far. 
The third observational fact is a uniqueness of the light curves, but commonness of the spectra. So what does it mean? That every GRB is unique in the light curve behavior of gamma ray range uh, diapason. So you can see that the spikes are not uh, repeating and each individual frame describes each individual GRB of the ear of Batsy. So you can see that they could flash like tens of seconds or even uh, less than one second. And they could have a different shape in the distribution of the spikes. But instead, the spectrum in gamma range, uh, we can see here by, by the energy, looks similar. Most of them uh, divided on three, maximum four groups, depending on you know which shape we can fit, which model we can fit to the data. Here, the data in different colors, you know, uh, present the different detectors of the Fermi, for example. So here we can see that there's like a black body model with the temperature less than 100 keV fitted together with the band function. And this is the GLB 110721, you can see here below. And this means that the spectrum is best described by these models then which should be interpreted afterwards. So more or less uh, the spectrum they have uh, usually they have single peak of the energy with the most of the photons come and uh, then they have a decrease uh, before and after sometimes after there could be some cutoff you know, of the photons coming in higher energies but you know this is the case for 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 uh, further interpretation so similarities we searched uh, throughout the, not only the gamma range, but X-ray and optical, which we will focus since we are talking about supernovae. And X-ray afterglow, after several years of the law, after the launch of the SWIFT satellite, uh, this is dedicated to precisely localize the uh, GRBs in X-ray domain. Uh, after just two years, they come two papers in the same volume, uh, practically, you know, stating the same stuff that there is a morphology of the light curve uh, presenting in the X-ray, okay? And we can see that the decreasing of the X-ray, which actually firstly was theoretically, you know, uh, the power law behavior, it has some uh, structure like the spikes, the temporal behavior that they have plateau, they have uh, initial steep decay and shallow decay afterwards. And the times of this happening, uh, you know, you can see that the signal of the X-ray domain is following, uh, you know, much more longer than the gamma ray uh, signal. So the same similarity searches were done for the optical afterglow. And uh, this was done pretty much uh, the same way, but collecting of, of course the, the optical data. And the, this is the photometric data for sure. And they were uh, discovered somehow more complicated picture, depending on uh, either it's like a prompt discovered optical afterglow or it was shining long after the gamma range. So it has some morphology and has some uh, standard shape. And here you can see the supernova bump we will discuss further. And it's very important for our discussion as well. So the similarity presents in the X-ray and the um, optical range, but uh, they vary in some small shapes, uh, which is a matter of discussion and interpretation of the model, for sure. Okay. Apart that, apart that observational facts, uh, people were trying to make some statistics, some correlations, and the, the best known correlation to the time is the EPIC EI is a so-called amateur relation for the long GRBs. This is the relation where you can uh, calculate the isotropic radiated energy in gamma range and the peak energy I was mentioning on the spectrum, the peak, the single peak, and uh, you convert them, of course, to the rest frame of the source so you can compute them as it is appeared at, at the GRB side. And then you try to build the correlation and uh, it was obtained in 2002, like, uh, by Amati, that's that's why it's called Amati relation, and uh, uh, it was few at the time, twelve sources. But time passed, like uh, you know, twenty years almost, uh, 
the past. And the statistics increased, and still the, the correlation for the EP and EI the holds. And uh, uh, of course, in compared to the whole uh, population of the GRB we observe, it's like 3,000 to 7,000 if you include all the missions. Here we have the sample on the picture of around maybe 3,000 or 300, so it's like 10% only, but still it holds. And the only thing we need to build this correlation for all the GRBs is the red chip, which is problematic to obtain. You know, sometimes we cannot deal with optical uh, signal and sometimes the telescopes are not available, so red chip is uh, not always present for our data. <clears throat> And uh, as well, we were talking here about the long journeys, but for short journeys, this correlation exists as well. So it needed longer time to, to collect the data because, you know, short journeys are brief, much, much faster than and uh, the, the signal goes under the threshold much faster and it needed time to collect. So, but it exists and like 10 years after in 2012, the, the, here the red squares, you can see and compare to the Amati relation for the long journeys. It exists and it, ha it has a higher peak energy in the spectrum and uh, a relatively higher um, isotropic energy. But it exists and in 2012, as the statistics come more like more like uh, 30 to 40 short GRBs appeared and the correlation still holds for that. And especially you can see here on the boundary, since it was very low isotropic energy on the boundary of this, uh, that the gravitational wave source 17 or 817 as well stands within three sigma of the of the correlation for the short journeys. Okay. So there is the last one, and we focus on on, on this one is phenomenology of the supernova association. So uh, what we can say that the GRBs appear as they appear, like in gamma rays, to optical and radio. But sometimes they associate it, so they accompany it with the supernova activity, as we can see from the spectrum and from the photometry. So there are two methods existed, and the first of them is photometric identification. It's done by optical light curve behavior, and the, the, there is like a special bump in the decaying, slowly decaying optical luminosity part. And it's easier to obtain since we deal with the photometry and we just, you know, fit, the, fit uh, the telescope with different filters and obtain the data just to the accurate reduction and we obtain the, the values. Okay. But unfortunately, uh, you know, as, as Lucas said, it is very important to obtain the photometry, but uh, you can get a limited information from that. So the, here's the typical, typical behavior of the optical afterglow and here's the X-ray just for compare so you can see that usually like it decreases normally without any behavior like slightly going down in the signal under the threshold okay and sometimes it appears so at the 10 days of the observer duration uh, observer time you can see the increase of the light curve bump okay so that means that here underneath it sees a supernova which emits and uh, you know, due to the due to the nickel decay, it rebrightens the, the the whole GRB stuff in optical. Here you can see the collection of the these bumps, characteristic bumps. Sometimes they're not clearly seen from the data, as here for the upper uh, curve, but sometimes they are very clear. Okay. Apart this, you know, the the photometry is easier and faster to obtain, and you can do it with smaller telescopes as well, with very small telescopes. But for the spectra, you need the bigger, the, the biggest, the largest telescopes you have. And uh, um, photometry usually accompanied by spectroscopy if, if it's possible. And the spectroscopic identification is identification to the spectral lines we have known. And uh, as they shifted and, you know, the presence of the typical lines for the supernovae and like nickel and like, uh, you know, uh, silicon and so on. And uh, <clears throat> we can see here that that uh, the, the brief nature of the supernova and the GRB itself, they change the spectra drastically within days. So it's not like a classical uh, supernova behavior and uh, it shines even there is like a plateau, but it, 
it decreases and you know changes very fastly with uh, prominent lines appearing here and bumps as well. This is the spectrum for the for the first uh, GRB supernova association of this kind. This 1998 uh, 1998 BWS. Okay, here you can see that the different uh, collection of this spectra, and you can see that they are not uh, very similar in behavior, like apart from some of them. And this one, the first one, is taken as the standard to compare to the, to the to the others happening, because it was very energetic and it was very unusual of its kind. Okay, and what we can say if we, for example. We start. We automatically start to search for some correlation, for some, you know, uh, similarities, uh, for because it happens together with the GRB. Maybe GRB has some signature, and when we compare with the uh, so-called Amati EPK isolation, it seems that there is no such a strong correlation with the GRB properties as isotropic energy and the peak energy of the spectrum. Okay, here we can see in blue, uh, green, uh, violet, and red, and the rest are gray, are just GRB without supernova association. Okay, so they start to believe as uh, they, they they try to uh, to differentiate to classify GRBs with supernova. By the way, the supernova appeared here is type one B and type one C, uh, so-called core collapse supernovas. So. And they start to classificate them as very luminous, ultra long, and you know, some some low luminous and others. Okay, but it seems that the more data we have, the more diverse it gets. Okay, and uh, here I need to say why then we need to study. Uh, I need to mention that uh, the, the the GRB supernova sample is even smaller than than uh, than the general sample, so it's. It's so we need to deal with it, and why should we need to deal with it, and how we can improve it? Okay, so the deeper study of this GRB associated with supernova can, can be quite interesting by its own because some of the uh, objects uh, they provide us uh, the supernova, as I told, it's optical, uh, GRBs, gamma, and sometimes there is a high energy as well, that the GV and TV range. So you can imagine that this single object can vary from TV range, the very high energy range, back to the radio range. So, and it can, you know, create a whole lab for high energy mechanism you can apply for a single object. And the, the, the challenge to interpret this data, to propose a model which fits uh, perfectly and oh, of course uh, to, to, to this data is very very hard and very very exciting okay and after all it could be ubiquitous so the point that we don't detect a supernova in many other GRBs it does not mean that they don't exist and maybe they exist maybe they are under you know some circumstances that we cannot see the light of the supernova bump or they are too, so, so dim or they are not energetic and so on Okay, so what methods we apply? We just search for the supernova GRB sample within Fermi area and pre-Fermi area. Fermi mm -hmm. area we, we deal with because it, has, it provides the largest uh, energy coverage. And so far we obtained 60 GRBs uh, divided equally 30 to 30 within Fermi area before Fermi area. We just search the whole catalogs and uh, possible mm -hmm. literature we have the Simba transient name server and all this uh, literature to review and to collect collect the data. And we obtained the 60 GRB supernova, as I told, the redshift is uh, fair, is under the one, the, the redshift under the one which should be expected for such an objects, okay? And some of them I told you very interesting, like uh, here not present, but 1909-14C, it, it is a TV source, okay? So I stated here, I move forward. So what is interesting? As I told before, they span all across the, the PKI isolation, so there is nothing to say at the first glance, okay? Then, since we need to deal with optical uh, range, we need to unify them, so we need to do photometric values, uh, 
to, to shift them to the, to the bolometric units, okay? So we find a very beautiful article by Lyman of 2014. They provide a self small sample to the date they collect uh, GRB supernova and they did a volumetric correction for them and applied formula and get a coefficients we can apply for our cases, okay? So we did this, we applied and we get a result. Here I can show just brief uh, preliminary results we have so you can see that the peaking time of the supernovae for this GRB 090618 is happening at around 10 to the 6 seconds. And this here is the light curve of the Hubble Space Telescope. Here, as you see, that some small bump, bump and uh, in luminosity is much higher uh, for, for, for the calculated data. Okay. So we tried to do a small correlation for that. <clears throat> and um, correlate the peaking time we calculated for, of course we need to calculate for the for the rest time for the for the rest frame of the source because usually the supernova community they calculate regarding to the peaking time of observer frame okay so we shifted them back since we have the redshift and we should have the redshift because we deal with with grb supernova and uh, you can see here on the y-axis there is like no strong correlation but they all below uh, the, the the redshift one for sure okay and the peaking time is strictly around the, the 10 to the 6 second okay the mean value is around 1.5 1. 1. Uh, to the 6 second as well it holds for the luminosity as we discover and support the previous findings that the Peak luminosity of the supernova, as was shown on the, on the, on the slide before, it is of course uh, you know the, the, uh, randomly dependent on the redshift, but the, the luminosity itself is uh, lying around 10 to the 43 Earth per second. Okay, and as I told you, the usually the supernova community they shift uh, all the peaks peak time to the of the of the observer frame in days. And they just put them together for comparison reason, okay? But to infer the physics, and you need to do more, a bit more, to shift them at the rest frame and study better the properties you have calculated. Uh, and uh, the, the, the one we obtained is not the first, I mean, first of this kind. We do, there were previous jobs done this before, like we do in the rest frame after the GRB trigger, of course. And they obtain similar results, just like nothing super, super, uh, you know, super new in obtaining the data. But then you have the point to interpret this data, and this is the, the challenging point, okay? To interpret homogeneously, and uh, we here can propose a model which fits uh, well with the, with the data we have for the peak energy, despite the isotropic energy calculated for the GRB itself, the, the gamma ray source, okay? And uh, it's called the fire show model. It includes the binary system as the progenitors, and it includes the core collapse of the supernova. With the subsequent release of this energy and accreting the stuff to the neutron star, creating the, the new neutron star, black hole, depending on energy. And you can see that depending on energy we have, and uh, depending on, you know, we can classify the progenitors as well. But despite this, we can see that the supernova we have is speaking at the same rest frame time, which means that supernova appearing here is kind of universal. And uh, since we cannot have some unique object, one object spanning eight orders of magnitude in gamma range, but having the same peak energy, the same luminosity in supernova, uh, you know, it naturally questions this uh, single, single object model. And uh, the binary system we use here, it natural, natural to explain the stuff, the complicated, uh, you know, the complicated picture we have here, okay? Uh, the, the collected uh, the data we have, you know, we have, Corrected for volumetric, uh, we did a volumetric collection, and you can see that peak average luminosity is around uh, 10 to the 43, a bit less. Okay, 
So this is the preliminary results we have for preparation of the article to publish together with Ikranet and Professor Finney. And uh, again, I show this picture and within this model, we can interpret the whole story of the GRB with the supernova uh, within a single scenario, which naturally explains all that stuff, of the rising peak of the rising bump and the supernova appearing at 10 to the six seconds. A very complicated initial behavior of the gamma range, okay? And the steep in, you know, uh, shallow decay of the X-ray as well as the, the other uh, temporal uh, peculiarities as, as the gamma ray spikes, which was, which was done in previous publications, okay? So as a summary, we need a whole story. We sampled the GRB, we subsampled them to, to, to pick the good data only because data s seems now not so not so rich and okay, not so uh, authors are not so generous to provide them in appendix anymore as before and as a suggestion for for your new observatory I can say that whenever you publish the data please provide in appendix the whole log of observations not just stating the results and pictures but the whole log so that we can reproduce them and improve them in the sense of physical interpretation. And we did evaluate all that light curves. We have collected the best one. We, we did a calculation of the luminosity and the universality peak of, we just, you know, reconfirmed. Re and we give an interpretation, which is coming in, in our uh, future paper, you know, within this month, I think. Okay, so this is the whole story. Thank you. And if you have questions, I'm ready to answer. It. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Yerna, for a very nice talk. Uh, I think we have time for a couple of questions, if anyone uh, has a question, please. Okay. Okay, I think uh, nobody has a question. Maybe everyone uh, wants to, 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 to read the details in the paper, so <laughs> it's better to, <laughs> yeah. to, to wait for that. Uh, thank, you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much again for your very nice talk. And, thank you for inviting uh, me for this conference. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Leon Lee. Ikra, uh, Leon. Could you hear me? Leon? Yeah. Uh, can Hi. you hear me? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, can you uh, yes, yes, of hear course. me? Yes. Can you yes. see my screen? Yeah, Yes, okay, yes. Okay. We can see your screen. Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, please make it full screen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for inviting me. Um, um, today I'm going to talk about um, self similarity and the power law in the time resource spectrum of the four very bright gamma robots. Um, uh, GRB lighting of 114 C, 13 or 427 A, and, and 16 or 509 A, and 16 or 625 B. My name is Liang Li. Uh, this is my main course, uh, co collaborator, main collaborator, Professor Rufini Morati and uh, Uda and Wang and Shi. And today my talk will be on uh, three of uh, recent, re recently project, uh, projectors. And before my talk, uh, let me uh, briefly introduce some very important uh, satellites. Uh, these are the satellites dedicated to, to uh, detect and the study of gamma ray bursts. The first one is the um, last swift satellite and uh, uh, um, was launched, uh, launched since 2000. Four, it carries the three main instrument, uh, the the burst alert telescope and the X, X 
retailer school and uh, all, all one and all the color school, all these three uh, instruments work together to observe the, the gamma reports, gamma reports from early very high uh, chrome emission to the late come uh, low energy uh, after emission after the emission. The second one is the NASA Femi uh, gamma rays this telescope. It carries two main instruments, the gamma ray burst of monitor and the large array telescopes. Uh, all, uh, all these two instrument, instrument um, together cover a very wide energy range from the 8 kV to uh, about uh, 300 GeV. And this is the magic telescope is ded dedicated to observe the um, of the gamma ray from in the very high uh, energy range so is uh, about uh, 13 GV to uh, more than 100 uh, TV. So, uh, so from the uh, FEMI and other other tele, other uh, satellite observations, we know we know that the um, the GRB show a very uh, uh, device uh, in the uh, spectral shell. For for the major majority of the um, gamma reports, uh, the the typical the typical spectral shell can be where we are fitting by uh, line thermal, um, uh, empirical line thermal, empirical function, band, so called band function. So a few of the them, a few gamma, a few balls might lead other, uh, another um, sub, uh, sub dominant emission component, namely the, um, the black body thermal component before the uh, band kick. So, so the the phenomenon of um, logical um, uh, function bound function is uh, usually believed to to organize organize from uh, uh, origin from the uh, line thermal emission like synchron emission. It has uh, four more parameters: the normalization and uh, uh, two uh, two uh, power photo index. The low and the high energy, low and the high energy power for the index alpha and beta, and the peak energy e peak. So in some cases, the uh, especially particularly in the uh, time resolution spectral analysis, the high energy uh, spectral index beta cannot be well constrained. So the the bound function uh, needed to be replaced by a color power fu function. To fit in the best the fit, fit in the observed the data. So the another uh, uh, emission model is in work the black body thermal component usually can be modified by a Planck Planck function. The Planck function is uh, in, including uh, only two modern parameters, uh, normalization and the temperature. From the, the typical value from this model parameter from the Femi observed give the, the low energy alpha index is around minus one and the high energy beta index is minus 2.2 and peak energy is, is about uh, 215 kV and the temperature is usually ranging from the 13 kV to 115 kV. So we use the in the official package, namely 3ML, developed by uh, FEMI GBM team and to um, perform a very uh, detailed data analysis to fitting a spectral and uh, get, get the best uh, mod, uh, to obtain the best uh, modern parameter. So this is the cartoon picture uh, show a professor reference models in the morning, Professor Rod has already introduced this uh, in detail. Compared to the transition fiber model, Professor Reference model 
is usually uh, have uh, might, might be have the four or two advantages. The first one because uh, the the bio, the professional reference model is is a binary system. This binary system is the detector 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 rate of the binary system in the universe is much higher than the single system. And the other advantage might be uh, in professional reference model. Uh, can actually explain why a supernova associates a gamma reverse. As pro, 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 uh, in pro, pro, uh, professor reference model, there's several uh, different process. In different process, physical profiles might have a different, uh, different uh, temporal and uh, spectral uh, uh, property, like like the uh, neurotrans that rise usually uh, might be indi indicate uh, a thermal component and the seminar uh, UPU phase and the last the cavity uh, process might be uh, from the spectral uh, of observation might be showing a featureless line thermal component. So, so we first apply the Professor Williams model to uh, one very famous uh, gamma reverse the lighting of 114C. This first, uh, this first is uh, the first case uh, have a TV emission by magic. After we carry out a uh, very detailed data lines, we find we clear find the three EB shows in this first, uh, the, the, the EB show one, uh, namely the precursor, including a neutral sunrise and the creation of the new neutral star. And the uh, episode two, they are including three major events. The first is the uh, formulation of the black hole and the, the onset of the GLE emission and the onset of the neutral materials from emission. The last is the cavity. Uh, carried out in the supernova injected by the um, black hole formulation. So uh, we can here find uh, uh, this picture is showed the best uh, spectral fitting for the uh, for the UPU phase in GRB lighting one fourteen C. We found the best uh, fitting model is uh, uh, including a best uh, uh, aligned thermal cut polar model plus in black body thermal uh blank blank functions so this is uh, we uh, uh, we perform the spectral analysis for uh, the UPE phase in 1914 in five success time intervention interventions in uh, increase the short time this is the first intervention for entire time interval for UPE phase in the lighting 1914 then we perform the other Mm, four or uh, four interventions. The each four interventions we uh, repeat repeat the previous one, but the uh, the we we divide the the, the light plane in, into the two equal part. We find the similar similar similarity of the uh, of the similarity property of the uh, in each stage of the interventions. Uh, we, we summarize uh, our information, our result, our fitting result and our information in the, in the tab in our table. So for the each, for each color, for the first, uh, we, we, we summarize the, uh, for the first and the second colors, we summarize the time interval of the e each intervention, iterations in the ob observed and the rest of it. Then we, we, we summarize uh, uh, the fitting parameter, the best of fitting parameters, uh, like, like, such as the um, low energy index, the cut off, cut off, cut off of the energy, and the, the, the temperature. And we also uh, use, uh, summarize the, um, some statistical, statistical information to uh, compare the model to select the best model from different models. We then uh, summarize the um, flag, the, um, the black property flags 
under the total flux uh, from each uh, fitting under the and also there as well as their ratio uh, the last column we summarize the total energy for each uh, time uh, intervals of each uh, iterations so we find a, a power law uh, uh, behavior of the uh, temperature uh, uh, for, for our UPE phase. So the seminar, we also find a, a power law behavior, power law decay for luminosity, for gamma ray luminosity from our UPE phase. This is confirmed from the, uh, uh, as well confirmed of the G, G, GV emission with a, a, a power law index uh, minus 1.3 around. So since we have a success, uh, operate, operate the professional inference model to 1940C, we, we, we then we dedicate to, dedicated to search other similar keys. We found uh, uh, three very bright uh, gamma reverse also have such uh, very interesting uh, observations. The first uh, we uh, uh, we we saw we also uh, identify three uh, episodes in the lighting uh, in the sixteen or six twenty five B uh, similar to the lighting one forty C. Uh, the uh, superlower uh, the ludicrous arise in the UPE phase and Kawaki. and also these three episodes also can be found in the. 1605 20, line A and 1604-27B, uh, 27A. So the interesting is we found out, uh, from all these uh, four bright boards, the, um, the new nutrients arise, the spectral of the new nutrients arise can be fit in by a, a line thermal, com, uh, line thermal, line thermal emission component like uh, uh, power law or color power law and plus and plus a thermal black body component. So we summarize uh, uh, the observation properties for this uh, of the thermal illusion source for this uh, for a bright um, uh, source, including the uh, time interval and the duration and uh, and uh, corresponding the flux and the uh, energy in uh, the, um, the astrophic energy in the super, uh, the neutron rest under the total, uh, astrophic total energy of the, uh, under the temperature and the red shift. So we also um, found the uh, five success, successful time integration uh, for the UPE phase in the G observed in the GRB uh, uh, 606-25B. Uh, so the left that we showed, the, um, the, the left picture we showed the, uh, all this uh, spatial fitting of the flowers coming in direction. The, the red table, we, we summarize all the, uh, the information of the fitting result of the uh, light of the, this source. So, the seminar, we also found uh, the seminar uh, result of, uh, for the UPU phase in the GRV6 or 5 or light A. So the very interesting, the cavity of the all these four source show a feature lines of uh, other power uh, model. So the afterglow, uh, the afterglow emission show it, uh, a very beautiful power law decay with a similar power law, uh, index with a minus minus one point three. So we so the last the last this is the last part we uh, um, uh, uh, wanted to brief briefly into this one our uh, recent recent work in our team. So uh, in this project we 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 went to uh, to study a. Uh, a connection between a, a sample of the superlower rise, a, a superlower uh, GRB and a, a, a superlower association um, post and our, our, our uh, family post. So we, we first found the, um, 
uh, the, for the BDN1, the solar uh, emission is much below than the afterglow emissions. Uh, for our BDN2 family, of course, the solar emission is uh, uh, slightly below the and the uh, after emission. Okay, okay. Yes. The BDN3, the solar is, uh, yes, above. Is, uh, is above. Yes, this is uh, enough. It's okay, okay. Uh, just leave okay. time to, to the questions. Uh, okay, 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 this is my conclusion. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'll stop here. Thank you. <laughs> no, no. Read the conclusion. Oh, okay, okay. The, my, this is my conclusion. My, my conclusion. The first is the, the spectral component of the lighting 143 shows three different characteristics for three different issues and the temperature and the luminosity in UB phase for the lighting 143 40 percent power of the key. The observations in G, in 1943, it consistent with the professor reference model. And the structural safety, safety similarity and power law characteristic are also found in GRB lighting uh, 160625 and 60609 A and, and 1304-20 some A. We compare the sublower uh, emission and the after the emission in the GRB sublower associations samples and find that different pH boost of different behaviors. Okay, that's all, thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, that's a very nice talk. Uh, I think we have time for a couple of questions. If anyone have any questions, please go ahead. Okay, maybe all is clear for everyone. <laughs> thank you very much again. Okay, thank you. For your very nice talk. Thank you. Uh, I think, um, um, okay, we have- uh, may, I ask a question? May, may I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what does it mean when the late, um, late time of uh, GRBs is linear? What is the meaning of these uh, feeds? Liang? Could you hear us? I think he left the meeting. Okay. Maybe I can answer. Uh, what was the question? Um, okay, uh, can I repeat it? Okay, I said, well, what does it mean when the late time of uh, GRBs is linear? Well, uh, that is one. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, you look at the la late time <coughs> emission in the <coughs> in, uh, in in X-ray for the afterglow and in the JEV uh, for the main uh, radiation uh, uh, high energy radiation and both of them we found very specific linear power law in the luminosity with time. This is a fact. And the late part of all the X-ray afterglow have practically the same power law. Um, we have explained that <coughs> with the model that the, that the afterglow is explained by the spinning new neutron star created in the BDHN model. And this is a beautiful explanation, and therefore the linearity is just a way to measure the spin of the neutron star, which is slowly decaying in time. And the slow decaying of the emission of the pulsar-like of the new neutron star is the one which we measure. Therefore, from that slope, 
we can measure the spin of the, the slowing down rate of the spinning new, neutron star as well as the magnetic field for the radiation in the synchrotron mode. All this has been theoretically explained, but was not presented in this talk. In this talk was just the observational fact, which is quite remarkable, where you see this uh, constant power law decay. The presentation was just to show the generality of this result practically in all GRBs. The theoretical explanation is also being addressed. This answer the question? Yes, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, may I ask another follow-up question? Yes, absolutely. Uh, how about the X-ray flares? What is the meaning uh, of those? What is the physical reason behind uh, the X-ray oh, flares? Yes, the, they are both gamma, gamma ray flare and X-ray flare. There is a long paper, one of the longest papers we have published in APJ, 2018. I am the first author, but uh, the second author has been Wang Yu, who really made uh, a fantastic uh, fitting of all the spectra. If you read that paper in APJ, long paper, January 2018, you will find the physical origin of the, of the X-ray flare and of the gamma ray flare. It's the same phenomenon, which is related to the moment of formation of the black hole. Uh, it's a fantastic sample because uh, if you take then uh, the understanding which follow that pioneering work was followed by an equally impressive paper in monthly notice of the Royal Astronomical Society on January uh, of this year, 2021. We had to wait for three years to have a deep, deeper understanding. And the deeper understanding came from this conical structure of the emission from uh, the gel radiation, 60 degree. And what happens is uh, in the root of that conical expansion, when you have the GRB formation, you have the explosion which propagate into the surrounding matter and appeared first in the, in the, in the, in, in the, 100 uh, uh, kV, and then uh, in the lower kV later, though for the first one is the gamma ray flare, and the second one is the X-ray flare. But this is completely understood. These flares are evident when you look in the equatorial plane of the GRB of the binary period. If you look at uh, from the top, uh, of the binary period originating in the GRB, you don't see any flare, either in the gamma nor in the X. Uh, thank you, Professor, for your concise answer. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, uh, I may also thank you, Professor Ruffini, for, uh, for your answer. Uh, I think we should end this section and uh, we have a 10 minute break. Uh, Surush, could you hear me? Uh, yes, okay. I can hear you. Are you? Yes, so, so we have around 10 minutes break. Actually, we are a bit, uh, you know, we, we have a bit more time, but let's have a just 10 minute break and then uh, come back.